Hello everyone, welcome back. Today I want to play around a little bit with the FFG62 USS Constellation, the new frigate which is currently being built by Fink and Yeri, which is going to be the first US Navy frigate in a while. So let's take a look what it's what it's supposed to look like. And this is basically where the problems start because we don't know what it's going to look like. Not even the US Navy knows what it's going to look like because it really isn't finished yet, even though it's already under construction, or at least the lead ship is, the design as such is not really uh, not really finalized. And uh, that seems to be a little bit of a problem at the moment. But yeah, as you can see here from this uh, article from the Warzone, which was recently published, actually like large parts of the ships are not even close to being finalized. But of course, there's like a general idea of what the, what the final specifications will probably look like. And we have these on Wikipedia and in command. And this is basically where I get my military intelligence from. So that's what we're going to go with. Okay, so to get a little bit of an idea what we're dealing with here, I've made a little bit of a uh, ship showroom over here in Norfolk. And there we can take a look at uh, some of the design principles that have been used in the past. So if you look at, uh, at frigate designs of the last couple of decades, there is a little bit of a divide from the ones that were uh, designed in like the 70s, 80s, and then the really modern ones, which would be uh, anything that's after like the mid 2000s, for example. Um, in former times, it wasn't really unusual that frigates were um, built specifically for one kind of job. And what you would see oftentimes is like an anti-submarine uh, warfare frigate or um, an air defense frigate, for example. And this is actually um, how, for example, the German Navy still works, where you have uh, a, de a dedicated uh, anti-submarine frigate over here. And then you have the Sachsen class, which is the air defense frigate, which is actually closest to what you would expect from a modern frigate. And then you also have uh, the Baden-Württemberg class, which uh, has water cannons and uh, a really big gun, but it's pretty useless uh, apart from that. So, for example, if we take a look at the Perry class, which is from the mid-70s, um, you see here this thing looks relatively old. It has some uh, some seawares. It uh, doesn't even seem to have a cannon, but this is the kind of ship that you would use for anti-submarine warfare. It's pretty small, like uh, 4 to uh, 4.5 thousand tons displacement. Um, but um, if you imagine, like, in a modern conflict, this thing would have a really, really hard time dealing with modern anti-ship missiles, for example. And the modern variants would be something that is closer to, for example, a Danish uh, Ivor Hutzfeld uh, class frigate. And so these actually have everything uh, that you would want on a ship like this. They have um, VLS cells, of course, not as many, but they have some. Um, they have, uh, for example, either um, close-in defense systems like, uh, like Seawiz. In this case, it's like a, like a little bit of a bigger cannon. And they usually have some kind of anti-submarine warfare suite and modern radars, of course. So overall, like a very like a lot of really good package, but relatively small. Small in this case still means it has over here. They say it's about six point six thousand tons displacement. So what options are in the field right now? So for example, like one of the older ones would be, of course, the German Sachsen um, Ira Holzfeld. And then, of course, we have the, the Japanese Mogami class, which is quite a bit smaller. They don't seem to have... Ah, there it is. Yes, so these are only like, uh, oh, 5.5 thousand tons. So still pretty close. And um, then, of course, we have the, the Korean ones. These are quite a bit smaller, like 3.5 thousand or something. And then, of course, we have the Frem frigates. So Frem stands for... Um, uh, Fregat European Multimission. Um, it's like a joint project between France and Italy, and it spawned a whole bunch of uh, multi purpose frigates that are currently in service with the French and the Italian Navy, such as, for example, the Bergamini class, which is this nice looking one here, and the French uh, Aquitan class, um, which is still divided in like an anti submarine role uh, section and a um, 
uh, air defense row, which is, for example, the Elsas over here. And I, th I think they have a second one that is also uh, outfit for this mission. But yes, so they're really sleek looking ships, very modern, a little bit um, like from the shape is designed in a way so that it uh, gives you a little bit of lower radio um, radar cross section. Of course, nowadays there's lots of satellites everywhere and you can't really hide on the sea anymore. But yeah. And as a matter of fact, the FFG-62, uh, or like the constellations in general, actually are derived from the Fram frigates, but, um, or at least that was the initial idea where you basically use a proven design and just more or less copy it with some modifications. But by now it looks like most, like the design commonality between them is something like 15% or so. They've become quite a little bit bigger and uh, yeah the specification creep is apparently still ongoing. So in these two charts, I just compiled the, displa uh, the displacement of these uh, um, contemporary classes and the missile capacity. And uh, this is basically what it looks like. So we have the Digu class as one of the smallest. And then we have like a, a large spectrum of more or less same size with uh, Norwegian, Japanese, German, French, Danish and Italian classes. And then we have a little bit of a jump up to the constellation class and of course the Baden-Württemberg class. Um, yeah, and for comparison, we have an Ali Burke over here, which of course is a destroyer and you can see that it is uh, at least 20% uh, or so larger than the biggest ones over here. If we look at VLS or like at missile capacity, you will see that um, looking at the Ali Burke first, Yes, this thing is designed to bring missiles to the battlefield, essentially. That's the whole purpose. It doesn't really have any dedicated anti-ship missiles. Like, why would you need them? You have planes on the aircraft carrier, which is in the fleet. And um, yeah, for frigates, it's more like, okay, you want to be able to do more or less everything by yourself. So they have some VLS cells, they have some anti-ship uh, anti missiles, and... Uh, Overall, of course, since it's a smaller ship, it will be like a little bit of more of a lean package. Um, the main difference, I think, that we can see here, like the bigger, um, the bigger frigates that's current, they're currently in use, have up to 32 um, VLS cells, with the Danish one being like a little bit of an exception. This one would probably need like an asterisk over here because it actually the the Mark 41, which is um, in, which is integrated in it, is uh, 32. The, um, cells system, but they have a dedicated system with an additional, I think, 24 or so um, ESSMs. I think it's a Mark 56, um, which like theoretically brings the number up to like 38. So it has, it actually packs a whole, like an impressive amount of uh, anti-air missiles. So don't mess with the Danish, I guess. And yeah, so the Constellation class is on the top here, it has a tw uh, 32 uh, cells VLS system and also packs uh, pretty impressive 16 anti-ship missiles, which in this case are going to be the new naval strike missile from, I think, Kongsberg. Uh, so a Norwegian design. All right, so how do we best showcase the Constellation class? This is what the scenario actually looks like. So we're over here. Um, at the uh, Bashin channel, I think it's called, or Bashi channel. And uh, our job will be to um, prevent some Chinese submarines from basically going through here. Um, don't ask me why, it's just something I whipped up really quick. Um, so what are our assets? We have um, over here our FFG-62 constellation as it is in the game currently. It has uh, 16 naval strike missiles, which we're not gonna use. It has uh, 32 ESS ESSMs, 16 SM2s, and um, eight um, anti-submarine torpedo missiles. Also note that we have um, a ram la launcher, but we really only have a single one. So this is actually something that popped up during testing. If you take a like a closer look at the uh, at the ship itself, you might note that in the front you don't see any any seawiz or anything, like no phalanx anywhere. It has a ram launcher, which is back here. But that also means when it comes to like last ditch, close in uh, defense, uh, 
the RAM launcher is your only option and it is blind in the front. And this is actually something which you can also see in the Frem frigates. So um, I don't know what's up with that, what the idea behind this is. I don't know if they can maybe put like anti-air um, projectiles into the big cannon that will air burst. But um, yeah, this looks like a little bit of, uh, of a problem. So when we get attacked by planes, we will have to make sure that we do not present the front of the ship to the missile attack, but have it somewhere from the side or from the uh, from the aft. Then we have a single um, Japanese uh, frigate, the, uh, the FFM-1 Mogami. I think this is like the really original uh, setup. It doesn't actually have any VLS cells. It has uh, some torpedoes and it has a very small ram launcher. So we want to have this thing as far away from any uh, air threats as possible because it can't really defend itself very well. And then we have a single submarine, the SS-501 Soryu of the Japanese Navy. Both of the frigates will have, uh, will have helicopters. In this case, on, um, so the Japanese have this Seahawk. And the Constellation has both a, uh, its own Seahawk and a little drone, like a drone helicopter, uh, the Fire Scout, which is not yet in operation. So uh, it's a hypothetical unit in this case, but it's basically like a helicopter drone with uh, at least the way it's modeled right now, it has, it's supposed, uh, it's surprisingly like long lasting, it will fly forever. And um, one thing that we should also note is that um, the Seahawk, which is uh, implemented here is like a modern version, which also has an MAD. So MAD, I think stands for um, um, magnetic anomaly detection or something. And this is something where I don't know how, how well known the technology actually isn't the, uh, the capabilities of it. The idea behind it is that um, it detects magnetic um, disturbances that would be um, created by submarines that are moving under the water. And as a result, you can theoretically detect a submarine which is passing below you because the magnetic properties of the area will be different. And it basically allows you to, to see a submarine underwater without having to use sonar. It's basically uh, anti-submarine witchcraft. I have no idea how well it works. It is implemented here and it basically will allow you, us to, to see a submarine if we're directly above it. All right. On the Chinese side, we have five submarines for which we will not take a close look at the, uh, at the paths that they will take so that we're not going to... Uh, so basically no cheating. We have um, two diesel electric submarines, which are going to be very slow and annoying. And uh, they're basically a little bit um, um, quieter and di more difficult to detect than a nuclear submarine, which will, but those will be a hell of a lot faster. In this case, we have three of them. It's uh, all of them are type 93s, one of them a little bit older and the other one's the more modern type. So these will just try to scoot through the uh, Bashi channel and uh, yeah, we have to try to catch them. Um, further assets that the uh, Chinese have is an, um, an AWAX over here and a whole bunch of uh, drones for sea surveillance. And we have a little um, CSG, this Shandong with uh, two more surface ships and they will move in position. And uh, if we annoy them too much, they might come and uh, try to sink us. Okay. So of course the Bashi channel is like a very, uh, very busy uh, shipping route. So we have a whole bunch of civilian uh, tankers and cargo freighters, and they will move through the area all the time and create contacts and a lot of noise and will just generally be annoying. Um, yeah. And oh, one thing I forgot, we also have a Poseidon over here at Kadena, um, which we can use and which will be essential to be able like to have a chance to catch the submarines. Um, yeah, so I guess that's it. Let's see how it goes. So just to review the goals really quick, we have uh, the scenario time is 48 hours. Um, we're not going to take that long. Uh, we have to find and kill five submarines and uh, don't die. So if we lose any ships, then we lose. All right, let's see. All right, we are in the game and I think it's time to hit that start button. 
uh, as you can see here, uh, we do not have God mode. It's like a, a real game, no editor. So we can't, we can't peek into the opposing sides. And uh, yeah, let's pause right away and see what actually the plan's gonna be. So the problem with the, so first of all, what do we do with the submarine? So the submarine is like really, really slow and it's, uh, it's not going to go over here in time to be of any use. Um, I'm probably just going to put it more or less over here. Let's check the let's check the depth. So this is like a little bit of an area where something could come through, right? So we'll position it over here and uh, basically just leave it there like a mine or something. Um, but it's just too slow to go anywhere. And also, I really don't want it to engage any submarines because if it's close enough to shoot torpedoes at things, then it's also close enough to get uh, torpedoes shot at it. And uh, yeah, we would uh, rather avoid that. This is a general theme when it comes to uh, to submarine hunting. Uh, you really don't want to go submarine hunting in a ship because you might get unlucky and actually find one. And uh, then you're in big trouble. Um, so we're going to use helicopters wherever possible. Um, so one more thing. So we expect there to be some kind of uh, air, like air attack at some point. And we know that the Mogami is pretty bad at air defense, at least this early version. So we would position it somewhere in the southern area. And we would put the constellation somewhere here in this northern area. And uh, so that means if there is uh, planes coming from the northwest, then it will hit the constellation first, essentially. So we uh, divide the whole strait into like a northern section, a middle section, a southern section. Um, okay, so first of all, let's tell our ships where to go. We want the Mogami somewhere over here, probably. Yeah, let's put it over here. It can like quickly scurry away behind the islands if necessary. Then constellation goes over here and the sub, yeah, it's actually fine. So with the sub, we have to see, we want it at periscope depth so it doesn't uh, use up its battery, go full throttle. Like this is uh, like eight knots is atrocious. Um, they will get faster if you submerge them because they are meant to be submerged and like they're Aerodin like not aerodynamics, but the same, but underwater is a lot better if they are diving, but uh, then of course they're gonna use a battery and have to surface at some point, which uh, I don't want. Um, all right, frigates, you go to full speed and haul your asses to where you need to go. Okay, so far so good. Let's shut off the, this annoying color. And we're going to go to Cadena, where we have a Poseidon. And this Poseidon has to start dropping some sonar boys. So we'll just quickly make a box over here. That would be um, Control K. We do not want to create a zone. Do new mission. So this will be the anti-submarine Poseidon. It's going to be a patrol mission, anti-submarine. We shut all of these. Oh, we can actually leave this on. This is fine. Transit altitude, go at max. And then we need them to be at 12,000. Um, just in general, uh, if you look at the bottom, uh, the scenario is uh, set up at sea state 2, I think. And it's... Um, moderate high clouds at uh, 25 to 28,000 feet. So we'll be below the clouds with this one. Okay. Actually, this is fine. So we assign the Poseidon to its job. And it will take a while for it to fly all the way down there. Once it is down there, we'll like switch its home base over here to the Lalo airport, which is uh, one of the airports in, in, in the Philippines. I hope it's really Philippines, I'm not perfectly sure, but um, where the US has access to. Okay. Okay, next up, we have a little drone helicopter on the constellation, which we want to use for scouting. This can actually uh, maybe net us a kill because the diesel electric subs will uh, be uh, at periscope depth for a while uh, until they dive and try to go through the strait. So we'll just quickly 
add a new mission. This is going to be the fire scout. We make it a support mission. And we want it to be at probably like 2000, otherwise it's not going to be able to see anything. Uh, we don't need this, this is fine. That should actually do it. And we will assign our little our little drone to that mission. Okay, time to run the clock a little bit. I'll go to uh So at this point, we can already grab our Poseidon over here and tell it what to actually do. So we want like a little bit of a linear screen. With, let's do three, three uh, lines of sonar buoys in this area. Once it has done that, it can go on and do whatever the hell it wants. And uh, also we select a new home base, which is going to be the Lalo airport. And uh, yeah, that's that's actually looking quite good. Um, I guess it's time to speed up the clock a little bit and let things play out. Um, yeah, the helicopters will stay on deck for the moment, and uh, I'm pretty sure we'll need them later. All right, let's see. So the Mogami is on its way still. Let's move it a little bit further south. Um, the constellation has arrived at its uh, at its new point where it's supposed to camp. And yeah, we'll just turn the speed a little bit down in case we move it. Uh, but yeah, I guess we can't really do much more at the moment. Maybe we can see if the fire scout is a little bit more successful over here maybe even move it in this little in this area between the sauna buoy lines and uh yeah well let's hope we get something in the net because there's not much more we can do for like the helicopters i mean if you check if you see like the distances involved here it's, this is like almost 200 nautical miles and the helicopter will be uh, maybe in a range like this, essentially, and it doesn't have much endurance. So, uh, yeah, we could go out and drop a few more buoys, but the chance of actually randomly finding something like this, that are pretty remote. Also, we could theoretically uh, switch on sonar, but this doesn't really make sense unless you know that you actually need it. Um, yeah. Also, um, as you may see here, we don't really have our radars active for the moment. I don't think we have been spotted yet, and uh, we want to keep it that way. Okay, let's see. Let's just uh, keep speeding along and see if we can find something. Hmm, would you look at that? This is a drone, apparently, and it's moving into our area of operations. Um, we should probably switch off, let's see. Yes, our ships are not allowed to attack air targets for now. So uh, yeah, it's already complaining about that, which is fine. We don't want to cause any diplomatic incidents uh, unless we really have to. Okay. The Poseidon should really start heading home. So we just press B to give it the... Come on, do what I tell you. Yes. So the Poseidon is going to head home, reload, refuel, take probably around uh, six hours or something before we can use it again. Until this time, we have to work with the buoys that we have. And uh, yeah, well, let's, let's hope that 
we can actually find something and uh, because for by this time we should actually have gotten some contacts uh, yeah not optimal there we are so we have found a goblin which is uh, code for underwater contacts this one has been detected by one of the sonar buoys and we have no idea what it is so let us see if we can't get the Mogami over here in range uh, we'll get yeah it's already moving at full speed okay uh, time to get over there it's at minus 130 feet which is more or less the correct depth and it seems to be moving so this is very likely a submarine let's see if we can get a better get a better fix at it while the Mogami is closing in to engage it so yeah this is basically uh, I mean air warfare is always quick and uh, violent when it comes to sea it's always a little bit of uh, like you have to wait hours for things to happen so we'll just have to speed up a, lot, a little bit yeah there we are so the buoys have detected as a 39b so it's a diesel electric sub and we have a pretty good idea where it is at least uh, 20 minutes ago let's see we have to be a little bit deliberate with this uh, so half an hour ago it was over here it's moving at five knots that means it will be over here in an hour so uh, it's probably still very much in this area our helicopter is pretty short range we're currently 50 nautical miles off so i guess we'll have to wait another hour or so to get in range that would be about 8 30 zulu okay 8 15 is close enough so we are 30 nautical miles off this is actually fine so now we will actually make a little box over here and this will be our uh, our Mogami anti-submarine mission it's gonna be a patrol anti-submarine it's gonna be radar and sonar active it can investigate outside yes transit is going to be about 2000 and it's going to be 1000 on station this is looking fine okay let's let's get this show on the road see if we can find this bad boy Do we actually have a fix on it? Yes, we do. By the sonar buoys. So we might actually be able to just kill this one without even having to look for it. Let's see. Yes, this is fine. Let's get on our 3D vision. So we will we'll intersect it somewhere over here. And we'll have to go, what's the launch altitude? And we only have a single torpedo, so we have to make that count. We can launch it at a dis at an altitude of, uh, yeah, 2,000 is too high. 1,000 should be fine. Yeah, it's already moving at max speed. We'll just have to wait for a little bit. There we go. And our fix on it is apparently pretty good like uh, this is our box of uh, of ambiguity essentially and we know the direction that it's moving in so we will just drop our torpedo somewhere somewhere over here probably so give the helicopter a good flight path seems to be doing its own thing a little bit here but this is actually fine so 
at this point this sub should be super super dead so we'll just do a bearing launch somewhere over here launch our only torpedo let's hope it's not going to be a dud and um, yeah see what happens there we go torpedo is in the water and now as you can see here the sub is diving pretty violently okay we had the last fix 16 seconds ago our helo is doing a little bit of dipping sonar trying to reacquire it still don't have a fix there it is now we have a perfect fix on it yes that's game over for you sorry and smash so we did definitely hit it but uh it hasn't been deleted from the map uh let's see there's not much more we can do at this point i guess seems to be coming back up now hmm well, let's speed up time a little let's see what it does hmm it's back at uh, 130 feet and seems to be continuing on its journey uh, that is unfortunate so it's time for the helicopter to return we'll just unassign it really quick and uh, yeah tell it to get back to the ship so what's the speed on this one it seems to be at one knot so Whatever we did, it did some damage, apparently, but it's not completely out of action. Um, also, it's not going to move much, so we'll just reload the helicopter and come back with another torpedo, I guess. And, uh, yeah, until then, uh, I guess we'll have to just uh, keep going a little bit. Also, one thing to note, uh, yeah, these drones have been pretty close to... Uh, pretty close to us the whole time so the chances that we're still undetected is almost zero and at this point i think it makes sense to switch on the radars and uh yeah no point in being in being quiet anymore better to have some situational awareness and uh yeah let's see where are the subs all right the poseidon is back out uh let's give it a nice path oh it's actually gonna straight gonna go straight for that submarine that's actually fair um that makes a lot of sense so let's let's finish that first and then go hunting again let's see so it's probably just gonna scoop in and drop a torpedo of which it only has five so we don't want to waste too much of it uh the sonar boys in this area have run out of power since so we don't know exactly where the thing is but since it can't really move uh shouldn't really begin be a big issue we'll probably just drop a torpedo like right on top of it uh let's see all right this should be fine. We'll just drop a torpedo over here. And it should solve the problem for us. Oh, there it actually is. And we missed it in both cases. There it is. We got it. This torpedo actually is useless. Okay. Well, should have left it to do its own thing. Well such as life so now that we have this in the back we'll just let it uh we'll have to put up a new row of of sonar buoys put them roughly in the same spot where we had them last time and uh yeah let's see if we can grab some more subs but one of them we have already in the back And 
we have another contact. And it seems to be right over here. It was detected by one of the buoys. So I'm pretty sure the Poseidon will go and try to narrow it down a little bit more. Since this thing is moving, it's definitely a submarine. There it is. It already got the designation SSN, which stands for a nuclear submarine. So apparently we have found our first nuclear sub over here. Uh, and it's pretty deep. It's like 670 feet in depth. Uh, so who are we going? Okay, so this seems to be a job for the constellation. So we go on an intercept course and get it to full speed. Um, to be honest, the Poseidon is probably gonna have a go at it. Let's see how that how that pans out. Because it still has like three torpedoes. And this is probably where. Oh, it doesn't seem to be confident in this approach. It's going to be doing another turn. Well, if the Poseidon doesn't get it, the Constellation will definitely get it because we're like, uh, this thing is moving at 15 knots. And we're moving at 25. Uh, 15 means like in an hour it's going to be here. Constellation can be here in exactly an hour. So this is basically the intercept point, just like very roughly uh, like fired from the hip. Uh, so this thing is not going to escape. Of course, we really don't want to actually meet it. That's That would be a bad idea, because uh, a single torpedo is totally sufficient to sink our, our frigate. Uh, let's see. Poseidon seems to be a little bit uh, confused and doing some, some zigzagging. Oh, let's see. It's probably going to be able to figure itself out. I'll just have to speed up time a little bit. And there we go, torpedo is out. So it's gonna have to dive quite a bit to get to, like, I mean, the, uh, it looks like it's right on top of it, but actually it has to dive another, like, 400 feet to get to that, uh, to that depth. And the sub seems to be also diving even more. Hmm doesn't seem to be yeah it's not going to like run in circles it probably lost its target let's see it still has quite a little bit of uh, of juice so it's gonna keep going for a while it has to reacquire the the target though oh and something exploded But we have no idea what that means. So we'll probably need to drop some more sonar boys here and see if we can reacquire the sub. Uh, I hope that the Poseidon is going to do that by itself. I'm just going to speed up a little bit and see. Ah, look at that. We have reacquired. Apparently we're seeing it through... surveillance camera. Is it at the surface? Oh, it actually surfaced. Look at that. And it's dead in the water and on fire, apparently. Well, okay, so this actually worked fine. Um, let's see if the Poseidon was probably going to be able to wrap this one up and uh, then we can go about our normal business again. There goes submarine number two. Well done, boys.
Oh, would you look at that? So we have spotted a um, an AEW airplane. It seems to be somewhere in this direction. We can't pin it down exactly, but that may be an indicator that uh, some kind of strike is going to be forthcoming. Ah, yes, this is... Okay, so if you see four planes uh, that close together uh, at this speed, then you might be in trouble. So we will just send our fire scout back. And okay, so we don't want to have the Mogami anywhere close. We'll try to, I mean, it's probably too late at this point. We'll just go full speed to the rear. And as we have figured out uh, earlier, we really don't want to present our front to whatever it's coming. So we'll just keep moving in this general direction see what's gonna happen there's another group over here and another one over there so we'll just track them for the moment if they get aggressive then we'll have to switch our ships to uh, all free when it comes to engaging air targets Yes, so this these are J-15s, so they're def they're probably part of a carrier group. They're coming right at us. So at this point, we're going to switch to... Weapons free. Yeah, there come the missiles. They seem to be aimed at the constellation. They're also going after the Mogami, though is not ideal. The Mogami uh, apparently seems to be represented by this box, uh, but yeah, this is our constellation over here. Let's see. Looks like the constellation is the first one to be hit, so... And there come the interceptors. So these seem to be standard subsonic sea skimmers so your good old standard old school anti-ship missile there's a whole bunch of them and we don't have we don't have a phalanx so they have to be all defeated by interceptors we don't have any close in uh, defense first one bites the dust there we go more ESSM is coming out. Can you maybe engage these? Oh, he's actually shooting at the planes. I uh, don't know if that's a great idea. You might want to use those channels for intercepts. Oh, this is not looking good. Uh, how far are they out? Five miles. What's the problem with the ram? The ram is out of range. Okay, oh, well, let's see. Yeah, that's not gonna work. Ah, okay. Well, for some reason, the ram launcher really didn't work in this case. Let's see if our trusty box is gonna fare better. Okay, in this case, we do get the rams. And they also score hits. Let's see. And we got hit. And this one's probably also gonna hit. Yes. Well, this was not the best outcome. So we're just trying this again. One thing I've seen uh, the 
AI get tripped up by is if we actually uh, force the ship to move in a direction. So in this case, it doesn't have any movement commands. It's just going to be able to do whatever it wants. Um, we're at the same point in time again. You can see the strike incoming. Uh, let's see if we can get any different results here. And it's basically going to present its uh, its side. Let's see, missiles have probably been dropped there. And now it's using ESSM to attack the, sh the missiles. This is actually fine. And this actually looks a lot better this time. Two more missiles incoming. Again, the ram launcher doesn't seem to work. If this one doesn't miss or malfunction, then it's probably going to seal the deal. And smack. Yes. Not lethal, but uh, yeah, we're already heavily damaged. And there's some more incoming here. What you see here is just machine gun fire. This is not how you defeat uh, anti-ship missiles. And smack. Two more hits and another hit. And we're sinking. Yeah. Okay. All right. So this is basically the score screen. Uh, complete disaster. Our task force got trashed. We only found two subs, which we killed, to be honest. So this is uh, actually fine. But um, it wasn't really the frigates who did the killing. More like the helicopters and uh, the maritime patrol aircraft. But hey, that's basically what... Uh, and uh, submarine warfare is like nowadays uh but yeah don't know what's up with the ram launcher it really didn't didn't work for us this time it does sometimes work sometimes it does not it's not super reliable in the game like doesn't probably not representative of what it's like in real life but again it's just i mean one of these things only has like 21 missiles i wouldn't bet my life on a ram launcher with 21 missiles but yeah there we are. All right. So um, if you think you can do better with the scenario, just let me know. I'll send you over the file. It was pretty fun and hope to see you all next time.